November 23rd, 1998, written by me. I was uh, nine years old here. I had a math test and I got an A and 36.5 out of 40. Smart kid. I never knew I was so good in math. I got the highest mark in the class. I was about to cry. I was so happy. Well, it will be a few more years until I'm 43 and I have a job, but soon I'll be reading this. What will I think and what will I do when, or sorry, what does it say? And soon I'll be 43. I have a job, but soon I'll be reading this. What I wrote when I was nine years old. And here I am doing it. Let's go a few more pages in the future. I even labeled the pages. Neurotic Scott. It's going to be the year 2000 soon. And this is 1998, this entry. <laughs> Do you think Scott has dealt with anxiety for his whole life? I think so. It's 1998 and I'm thinking about it's going to be the year 2000 in two years and I write soon. And if I write November 2000, I won't remember how to put all of the zeros. Well, I will probably still be alive in the year 2030. I will only be 41 years old, I think. Well, that's all I wanted to say, Scott St. Marie. How old are you when you are going to be reading this journal? I had eyes locked into the future. And isn't that what anxiety is? So this journal, uh, this was my first journal. I got this, I think, when I was six years old. And I've been journaling almost daily. But of course, there's some days, weeks, months that go by where I haven't journaled. And uh, I want to talk to you about things that I've learned from 25 years of journaling that may calm you, that may surprise you, that may bring some clarity um, into your days and, and, and weeks to come. So I had this all in writing. I have journals, which are from every trip I go on, every backpacking trip, wherever I always get a new book. And I journal through that just about the trip every single night and uh, in the mornings. And uh, I have a journal here that I started. This one started in 2012 when I put it all on the computer. And this goes until this document is 93 pages, all single spaced. And it is a lot of entries. So in 2008, when I was diagnosed with depression, you read that journal versus my journals before that versus my journaling after that. And what you begin to see is every single thing, my friends, changes and passes. You know the classic quote, this too shall pass. It's so lame, but it's so true. I got a, I got a, let's see, this was in February 2nd, 2012, a big episode of depression. Let's see here. I am depressed. I can't eat or sleep. 10 pounds left me in the past weeks and I see no hope for the future. I feel utterly alone and heartbroken. I would trade my mental pain for any kind of physical pain in a heartbeat. I see people, but not the way I want to see them. I wonder how they see me and how much pain I'm in in this moment when I walk by them. I want to tell them how I feel and that they're lucky to be feeling just okay or fine. It goes on and on. And when I read this, I look back at Scott and I'm like, oh, if only you knew. If only I could grab you, put you aside and be like, it's going to be all right, buddy. And we, when we find ourselves in these pits, in these ruts, in these trenches, we can't find a way out. Look to older people. If you are lucky enough to have a dad or a mom or someone you can speak to that's been through things, they will admit that in the moment, yeah, you don't see a way out, but it will pass and it will change. And things change without our permission too. Things change just by us living and going through day to day. You know, you just live with shoes on and before you know it, the laces are torn up, the soles are broken. You didn't, you just live day to day, but they change, right? We were not doing anything, but the weather just changes. Things just change. And the meaning we put towards things changes because we change. So the same thing can happen to you. I can go through a terrible depression now. And yeah, it'll still be terrible, but it's going to be different than other ones that I've experienced. And it's going to mean something different than it used to.
and I've gained this perspective over 25 years and I can look back every day and say, man, was I in pain there. Man, did that suck. Man, was my heart broken there. Was I lost there? I couldn't find a way out there. And oh, I journaled four months later and I was laughing. Isn't that interesting? The end of the world was never the end. And that's number one. Everything, everything passes and changes. And number two, when I look at these journal entries, it's me writing out what happened and what I think about things and what I think of myself and what I thought of what happened and what will happen. And what you realize is the mind, the thinking mind is responsible for so much suffering in my personal experience. The mind and thought is responsible for so much of the pain that I went through. Like now, even in pain, like I got a headache right now and I get a, I usually have headaches through the day and we're working on it. We're, we're really working on it, guys. And people are just like, just drink more water. Have you tried vitamin B1 or B6? I'm like, wow, I'm past that. But thanks for trying. Now, if I look back and I'm looking at all these situations that I'm going through, and even in pain, what makes the pain worse is thinking that it's going to last forever. That you're, you're stuck only if you stop. And this is where faith really comes in. And this is where proof from the past does help the thoughts of the future. Where it's not going to last forever. And I don't need to think that it will. And I don't need to put myself in this pit of worry because that is literally going to do nothing for me. And worrying about this is making me suffer. And making myself suffer is not something that is kind towards me. Why am I being so unkind to myself about this thing? Why am I hurting myself deliberately by creating all of these scenarios and thoughts and overthinking this and you're worried about this thing so you Google it and you get into it and you watch YouTube videos about it and you don't let it go. What are you doing to yourself in those moments? Today, still full of crying, sadness, no appetite, I can't even leave my room. I can't scroll down even more. Let's open up like 2016 for you all. You know, I just have to tell you that everything passes, no matter how hard, no matter what state you're in right now, it will change. It will change. And if you can relax the mind a little bit and not dive into scenario building, and not plan too far into the future because things will so change along the way, you know? Thinking about yourself, like me as a kid, what am I going to be like when I'm 43? Oh, Scott, I'm not even there yet, man. I'm 10 years away. So if you cannot think 10 years ahead, even five years right now, if you're going through a tough time, the most you can think of is just getting through the day. And if that... If that, three months into the future. If that, 90 days. But thinking a year from now, thinking five years from now, thinking eight months from now, come on back, be kind to yourself, and just focus on what you got to do now, okay? Now, if I go through the journals once again over 25 years, number three is people. What did I write down for you all? People are the most important beings on earth and create the best memories. I think some will argue with this about beings and are, you know, are we any better than animals, uh, beautiful deer and kangaroo and the insects and vegans may have a different uh, view of this. And that's totally cool. In my experience in journaling, when I have a really vivid memory of a place, when I did my traveling, uh, the best memories I had was when I experienced something with somebody else. Those really stick with me because a moment was shared. A moment was really shared and although they were experiencing maybe something different and and felt different things when you saw that certain thing or that happened around you or happened to you, you were still in that space together. 
And for some reason, by feeling their energy and being with them and knowing that you're creating something that they'll never forget and you'll never forget, somehow it's, it's embodied a little deeper. And when I look at, you know, I don't have them because they're all, they're all in, in print. They're in my closet in my parents' house. Um, I, I read them and I'm like, wow, did I have a good time when I wasn't by myself, when I was part of a team, when I was traveling with a group of people, when we went to this event together. Uh, those are the memories that really stick with you. And what's unfortunate as we get older, people, and what I'm finding now, to be honest, everyone, if you're around my age, I'm 34, is people are creating their own lives. You know, you find your spouse and you go have children, you get a house, and a lot of people I know are then moving to the suburbs out of the city, and there's distance, and they're creating memories there, but they're with people. But the memories that I've really, really had just soaked into my very fibers of my being are ones where I'm with like a big group, like a community, like a lot of people around and developing those relationships. Like if it were up to me, I'd live, uh, I'd probably start some kind of cult and have a bunch of people living in some, some reserve, some, some community. Like it was, those memories really stick with me. So people, the most important beings on earth, and they create the most suffering. You know, that heartbreak, that abandonment we all feel, the loss that we feel when loved ones pass away. Uh, human beings hurt us the most, yet they bring us the most joy. Can't live with them, can't live without them. Now, a big one here, number four, is I worried for absolutely no reason because the thing I worried about never happened. Countless examples, countless examples of all of these years of journaling where I'm, my mind is just set on something bad that's about to happen. What if I run into this person? What if I feel this way forever? It's, it's just like the worry just in these pages i'm trying to find something for you you know and and it's interesting because in my journaling let's even from this 2012 i'm even rejecting that i'm having worry that i don't even want to admit that i'm really really concerned about something i always have tried to flip it to the positive just flip it just flip it like, whatever I have to do to be happy, that's all that matters. I think about this, I think about this, but I'm not sure if I can control it all. Like, this is what, March 2013. And I'm just trying to talk my way out of a feeling, even if it is worry. Now, what happens if you're worried, if you actually admit that I'm worried about this thing, and let's just admit it, even out loud, even to yourself, I'm really worrying that this is going to happen. Okay, I'm really worrying that that's going to happen. All right, well, that's what's going on right now for me. And as you admit it and as you accept it and as you don't compromise with it, but just let it be, uh, you can sometimes, the layer of worry, like it was under this kind of uh, black curtain and veil, and somehow you just kind of lift it and see what it actually is and be like, how foolish is that? I can't believe I was worrying about that. And when you see the proof in all this journaling, yeah, man, most of it never happened. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. And the last thing I want to say, number five, is writing really helps. That's one thing I learned. Writing out all of these things that I was going through uh, the good, the bad, like everything that went on, writing was such a tool. It was such a tool to express yourself and to put actual things in writing because they just become cyclical in the mind and you have these ideas, but you can't organize them. They're like, it's in a web almost, but so disorganized, it's cluttered, it's not even stacked up. And when you can put them on paper, line by line, bullet points, paragraphs, put a beautifully structured sentence in exactly what you're doing, exactly how you're feeling, exactly maybe why and what you can do about it, 
It's like boom, 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 boom. It's just in a list. It's ready for you. It's just ready for you. And look, I just scrolled down to a random October 5th, 2013, 10.33 a.m. I'm putting the times. So it's been a while since I wrote. The main thing I have to write about is this trip to Europe. Just thinking about it right now is a serious mind trip. When I think about it and put myself back into one of the places I went to, just by thinking about it, I trip out. I went there all alone. I had a knapsack and that's it. I'm so proud of myself for doing it too. The amount of memories I've stored up is just unbelievable and the amount of people I've met, just unbelievable. There, there you go. It's, it's so much about the people. Wow. And I wonder if you look back at your journals or you start one now and you look at it when you're 40, when you're 43, because I'll do that. I'll read this baby when I'm 43 just to please you, past child Scott. I wonder what you'll think because you're not going to be the same person and you're going to learn so many things along the way and you're going to want to go back and change things. You're going to be like, I could have dealt with that so much better. I know so many more tools and I have so many tricks now and I have so many different people that can help me now and so many different hobbies and things that I can escape into and you're going to find that and that means that you've grown and by me reading all of these things and how I didn't deal with things very well. And that I thought very differently. That's such a sign of growth. Because if I read these things and I'm like, yeah, I think the exact same way now. And yeah, I'm worried about the exact same things now. And, you know, yeah, I have the same opinion about that and that and that and this political thing and that and that. It's like, have I really changed? Have I really grown? And the proof is right here. So if you're a journaler, is that a word? Um... If you want to comment on YouTube of, of maybe just one thing or five things that you've really learned about your experience journaling and how it's helped you, how, is, how it hasn't helped you, um, I'd be really curious to read those. Thanks a lot for joining everybody. My name is Scott St. Marie. This was done, this video was done uh, Monday, February 26th because, and it's 11.48 a.m., so let's see when I upload this. Hopefully uh, it takes me just an hour. It'll upload. I'll edit some bullshit. Uh, and then uh, it'll be up because I procrastinated. And here we are putting out a garbage video. That wasn't that bad, was it? I've always wanted to do this video. But uh, procrastinate no more. Sometimes you, I just upload something and it's like, this is good enough. It's not perfect. It's not great but it's good enough. It's good enough.